Lists are a special type of object that hold other objects. I can initialize a list by simply using the list function. I can create items in the list by providing arguments to the list function. What is important to understand is that a list can hold objects of all different types. In this example, the first object is a numerical vector of length 5. The second object is a character vector of length 1, and the third object is a boolean vector of length 1. If I wanted to access an item, I use the subsetting with double bracket. I can also add on new items, even providing a character name for the item. When a list has named objects, those objects can be accessed using a special dollar sign notation that is reminiscent of the same notation for data frames. Lists also aren't restrained to holding just vectors. They can also hold matrices, data frames, and even other lists. Lists are so powerful since they create helpful ways to organize diverse sets of data or results. Oftentimes I have many groups of data and it would be helpful to calculate statistics for each. I might organize these statistics using a list. I'm going to load in the stock data just as we have in the last couple of videos. And my goal will be to create a summary of the prices for each stock. I'm going to do this using a for loop. The first line in the for loop will identify the rows of interest. The second line will calculate the summary and store it in an object called stock summary. I also shouldn't forget to initialize a stock summary object here as a list. Finally, I can take a look at the results. Not surprisingly, there's a lot to look at. If I wanted, I could look at a specific summary for a particular stock, say Google's stock. What I've done here in just six lines of code is very powerful. I've calculated summaries for every stock in the dataset, and this code works regardless of if I have five stocks or 5,000 stocks. In other instances, I might choose to do something even more complex, like fit a linear model to the data for each stock separately. Even in that complex case, a list can be used to store the result. I noted in the last video that as you become more familiar with R, you'll find out that there are more helpful functions to do operations commonly done in for loops. This is also true with this example, which could have been written much more compactly using some additional functions. Some of these functions we'll encounter in the next section, like the functions by and apply. Great work on making it through the second section of videos. Take a short coffee break, practice what you've seen, and then get started on the third section.